Dr. Patel, thank you for joining us and for giving us this exclusive interview, your first after taking over as the governor of the RBI. Uh, my first question is related to the policy. Uh, in a run-up to the policy, many commentators were expecting that you would go in for a rate cut, given the low headline inflation rate. Uh, but you did not do that, and you shifted the monetary policy stance from accommodative to neutral. What are your reasons? The Monetary Policy Committee uh, uh, resolution and uh, statement that, uh, that uh, was published uh, last week was fairly extensive in terms of the explanation that was given. Uh, uh, to recap, since we have committed to move closer to 4% inflation because of the legislated and notified mandate of the government, we needed to look beyond the headline number to see where the kind of disinflation that is needed to take us towards four would come from. And uh, the committee felt that there is, uh, that inflation excluding food and fuel is something that has been stubborn uh, since September, October, and has shown a little sign of coming decisively below five. Uh, and, and that was the main reason why we had to look through the headline inflation. The other reason uh, is that uh, the effects of the demonetization and now the remonetization uh, also may impact some of the commodities where we have seen disinflation, uh, but we don't know uh, to what extent and for how long. Uh, in, it's most likely going to be short-lived, for example, the uh, the disinflation in vegetable prices. Therefore, the headline number needed to be looked through, keeping in mind that we need to get to closer to 4% uh, yeah, on a durable basis, uh, but in a calibrated manner. And that was the reason that uh, the MPC thought that we needed to have the flexibility going forward. Therefore, the shift uh, of the stance from, uh, uh, from accommodative to, to neutral. Uh, um, and that's the main reasoning. We also find that internationally, uh, commodity prices have firmed up. Uh, the food, international food price index has gone up. The base metal price index has gone up. Uh, crude prices continue to be in the mid-50s uh, uh, and, uh, and staying there uh, for some time, uh, given the data of the past few months. So the uh, Monetary Policy Committee uh, noted that while inflation uh, will be in the range of 4 to 4.5% 4 in the first half of the next fiscal year, it then actually increases to 45 to 5%. Uh, and, uh, and that was one of the uh, main uh, reasons uh, why we had to take the stance that we did. Uh, that while we will have a, some beneficial impact of, on inflation in the next few months, uh, it then reverses itself, uh, mainly because uh, inflation, ex food and fuel, uh, continues to be relatively high. How should we understand and interpret uh, the neutral stance? Does it mean that uh, there will be no rate cuts in the next three months or no rate cuts in all of 2017? The Monetary Policy Committee uh, could either keep rates constant, increase them, or bring them down. Uh, it, it gives, it, there are three options possible uh, compared to when it is accommodative. Uh, so so given, given how the inflation outlook changes, uh, if at all, over the next uh, few readings, uh, in terms of the data that, uh, that comes about and our projections uh, based on that uh, for, the, for the next uh, fiscal year, uh, uh, policy changes could be either one of those three. Does this stance of yours mean that the economic recovery could be sooner and sharper than what most forecasters are predicting? Well, uh, actually, um, I, if you look at our projections uh, that, uh, that were uh, published last week as part of the MPC, uh, that we, we expect uh, growth to be about 7.4% in the next fiscal year, uh, which is...
uh, positive export growth. Uh, I think the budget uh, uh, has provided impetus to, uh, to key sectors which has multiplier effects, uh, realty, housing, uh, the rural segment. Uh, and, uh, and, and over time we will see that, uh, that uh, some of the capacities that had been installed uh, in the past uh, will come up for expansion. Uh, so the private uh, investment demand uh, is, is something that maybe in the second half of this year we, we may see a little bit of, uh, of Philip coming from that source also. Uh, so our central estimate for next year is 7.4%, which I think is a, is a highly respectable growth rate under the circumstances. Your assessment of the economic pickup and GDP forecasts are rosier than what has been predicted by the chief economic advisor. Uh, and some others as well. What do you have to say to that? Well, you know, we had to, we predicted a 7.1% growth uh, in December for the current fiscal year uh, based on the information we had at that time, uh, which was in the immediate aftermath of the withdrawal of the specified bank notes. Uh, uh, and uh, and we, we came up with a 7.1% number uh, through the exercise that we had done internally at the RBI, uh, which was also a number very close uh, to what two multilateral agencies at the time also came out with. <clears throat> Both the ADB and the World Bank came out with numbers of 7, 7.1%. Uh, and, uh, and then we have revised that estimate at the February policy as more data has come in. And while we give a point estimate, actually our statement has a fan chart which shows that there is uncertainty around these numbers. Uh, I mean, we could very well give a, a very broad range and then never be proved wrong. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, we don't have that luxury. Today marks 100 days of demonetization, a period which has been fairly turbulent for the Indian economy. Do you think that, uh, you know, in your estimates, do you think that the Indian economy will be able to shake off the negative impact of demonetization? Well, uh, almost everyone agrees that, that the impact is going to be a sharp V that we, we would have uh, a downgrade of growth for a short period of time, but the remonetization has uh, happened at a, at a fast pace, uh, and that was, uh, that was part of the plan uh, that uh, subsequent to the uh, withdrawal of the specified bank notes, uh, our production plans uh, and, and supply processes uh, would ensure uh, that the remonetization happened uh, as quickly as possible, uh, and which, given our capacities in terms of printing currency notes, uh, uh, is is uh, is at a high level. Looking back, uh, you know, the last hundred days of demonetization, do you think that the principal objectives of the exercise have been met, and do you think that corruption has been reined in and counterfeiting as well? Well, you know, the, there were several objectives uh, behind this. Uh, from the RBI side, uh, the fake Indian currency note uh, is, a, uh, is an important issue uh, that, needed to be, uh, that needed to be addressed. Uh, the other collateral benefits from this uh, in terms of greater accountability, better public finance, more transparency, are by definition uh, areas that uh, that take time for 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 to fully play out. Uh, we have also had uh, financial reintermediation in terms of uh, greater financial uh, savings going into deposits, mutual funds, insurance. Uh, so there have been a fair number of of benefits. Uh, uh, the impetus given to digitization uh, is, 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 is something also that, uh, that, that should be beneficial uh, going forward. Uh, but I think in all these uh, supportive policies and, and more work is needed uh, so that, uh, that these benefits are not only tangible uh, but uh, are long-lasting and durable. Okay, one must compliment the RBI for managing the rupee despite the FCNRB outflow and demonetization. Do you really believe that the rupee is uh, overvalued, and is that a cause for worry? Well, you know, uh, the exchange rate value of the rupee is, uh, is broadly market determined, uh, and uh, the Reserve Bank of India, in terms of its long-standing policy, uh, is that uh, we intervene uh, uh, only uh, uh, during uh, uh, episodes of undue uh, 
volatility. There is a feeling that, you know, if the rupee is overvalued, then, you know, it could mean, uh, you know, it could stunt growth because imports get good cheaper. So that's why the question. Yeah. Well, you know, our current account is, uh, is, uh, is low, uh, and it has been low for, for some time now. Uh, and, and it's at a level that is easily financeable. Uh, so, so, so in that sense, uh, the rupee is broadly where it should be. Thank you.